There's a lot of conflicting definitions of transmedia. There's a lot of people using it for their own ends, and they have their own means to those ends. Um, but by and large, transmedia storytelling kind of has four different trappings that you'll see as you kind of look through them this week and look at some case studies next week. Um, but they do four things, these stories. Um, one, hugely they rely on audience participation. Um, they are kind of co-creative endeavors where the user or the reader or the whatever um, who didn't make this thing is actively contributing content and their viewpoint and perspective uh, on that media, on that kind of experience. Um, so they're kind of heavily reliant on audience participation. Um, transmedia stories take place across different media, so involving things like social media networks as well as websites, video, photo, um, all to kind of create a you know an experience that um, takes place across different media forms to tell its kind of one or many messages. Um, Often these, these different transmedia stories kind of exist in, in one universe or a story world, um, but there can be kind of several different tangents or types of stories within that one universe that's been created, and I'll kind of detail those things and get a little bit more granular this week and again next week when we get into some case studies. Um, but lastly, fourth point, um, these stories tend to vary in terms of their purpose. Um, they can be used in a variety of different ways for entertainment, healthcare, the financial sector, business, marketing, all kinds of different purposes. So transmedia stories do several different things and kind of manifest in several different ways that we'll detail, but these are kind of the big four characteristics of transmedia stories.